I think they secretly love all that sword stuff. <laughs> sword fighting isn't taught at the ballet school. It's taught specifically for Romeo and Juliet. We stretch the technique a little bit. It's not necessarily the correct way of fighting, but choreographically it works for the production. OK. The thing you've got to make obvious are the attack and the defend moments, because if not, it all just looks the same. It looks like people just having a bit of a tickle. It's repeating the sequence so they don't have to think of the sequence. The main thing is not to be thinking, am I going up, down, up, up. It's to fight without thinking about it so that they can put it in their emotion. The rage is quite real in the fight. Uh, you sometimes have to remember to control it because you get to the end of the fight and you've lost your right arm. There is a rush of anger, adrenaline. They are musical and they have to be in it. Sometimes I think, if they weren't on the music, how would it sound? And if a dancer gets carried away and you, get, you can hear the beat of the swords not in tempo with the beat of the orchestra, it's a bit of a problem. It's the man in the pit that is going to make or break your performance because your life is in their hands. I have to be jolly careful in the sword fights, you know. I mean, there are these, these guys up on stage apparently killing each other, you know, so they, they don't need me to mess around with the tempi. It could become extremely dangerous. But, of course, it has to be fast enough to look violent. You always have an eye to check that things are going well and that you are together. So let's do act two, a Kusho fight, please. So there's no room for sort of improvisation because if, if you're fighting, if the sequence is up together, down together, and one of the fighters decides to go the wrong way, then what happens is you just end up chasing each other. When you do the last diagonal, don't go as far. Chris was just pointing out a few things to make the fight look more realistic and impressive. Don't go before, yeah, make sure you go down. Because he'll do it right on the beat. Yeah. And the closer to it, the better. But in this particular moment, I have one big swipe, and then I get a little bit calmer and a nice little, nice little tickle. And then from nowhere, I just get a complete swipe across the head. And he has to duck. You, know, you want to get out of the way as quickly as you can. Even a little later. Later. Even a little later. <laughs> Go back there. He was just trying to make me delay it as much as possible so that it looked more effective. It's really scary. Some of them are very quick to move, some of them are a bit more lethargic. He wanted to, even later, but I thought, nah, I'll maybe save it for the show. <laughs> After you've done the tap of the sword and then the, the freeze moment, can you go out and make him come to you? Kenneth liked a bit of movement there, and otherwise, if you come into him, he ends up staying on centre the whole time. Sword fights have gone wrong, so the swords now have a very small V channeled into them. The harder, the they're stronger, but it makes them a little more brittle. So if they are hit too hard, they will just snap. They're then just left with bare sort of steel, metal, um, and it can be very dangerous. There is nothing um, safe about what we do, sword fights or dancing or anything. Uh, the moment that it becomes safe, it's boring, actually. Here we go. Ah. Johan Koborg had a chip, and he actually ended up with a fragment going into his eye. The last performance, the sword completely disintegrated. The sword just fell apart. Halfway through, my sword broke. <laughs> so we had to improvise. It's more of a twist doing that rather than going. On a fight, the very beginning of Romeo once, it's two up and two down. That's and it. I forgot, I went to defend this That's way, fun. and he just came down and cracked me straight on the skull. And it hurt like hell. There was a new character rehearsing it, just went for a cut to the head as opposed to my hip, and just one of those really lucky dodges. When I was dancing the role for the first time, in Act 3, I was lying on the bed waiting for Romeo to turn up before curtain up, and he comes, he's got a big gash on his head from an accident that has just happened. <laughs> I'm hoping Federico doesn't turn up onto the bed in Act 3 with blood all over him, but... Thank you, Richard. <laughs>